Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks and you're about to watch part two of a masterclass series that we did with Luna, the blue and yellow macaw. Now Luna has a very unknown background. All we know is that it was probably quite traumatic and Luna was not treated the best. So if you missed part one, go ahead and check it out. It has a lot of great lessons in it. I'll leave a link in the description to part one and let's get on with part two. Now, if you didn't see part one of this video with Luna, then I'll catch you up to speed real quick. Basically, we spent a good chunk of our class just trying to figure out how to get Luna out of the travel carrier. And once we accomplished that, it was very clear that Luna was uncomfortable in this situation, in this brand new environment. And so we decided after a lot of different things of trying uh, to basically just let Luna sit and take it all in and just kind of see if we could get Luna to relax at all in this environment so that we could train. So far, he has refused any sort of food rewards, only really shows wanting to step up to get back to his cage, and that's about where we're at. Did you hear that Luna is taking treats now? Like, he took a sunflower seed from her a little bit ago and fluffed up a little bit, so she rewarded him. He's calming. It took him a while to get used to like the, the, the stick and, and the clicker yeah. and all that stuff. So okay. we've worked through a lot of that. He's, he's pretty much used to it. He sees me going through my pouch and he's like, okay. He knows what's up. Well, I, I was trying to get him to blow raspberries, but then I realized <laughs> that he doesn't have lips, so he couldn't do that. <laughs> so now he just sticks his tongue out to this one side and blows real hard. Do you want to see if he can get him? <laughs> okay. Do you want to try it? See if he'll do it? Yeah. What do you think, Julia? Yeah. He looks a little calmer. Do you want to do it? Oh, that is hilarious. I like that. He kind of came doing that a little bit. And then I was like, look at him do what he does. And then he taught him how to do that. It's that is cute. Have you talked to Shane's head No. No, I haven't Sometimes done that. Sometimes Do you want to real quick? Sure. Yeah, we could try I'd like to get him to spin. So, no, I don't know if he'll do it for yeah. me, but you can gently blow into his nostrils. How does it work? I know, he's a little confused. He's, if you want to do it, because he's not comfortable with me, just get close, just gently blow into his nostrils. Okay. Most macaws respond to it, sometimes they don't, but he's he's too hyped by me. Right. But if you want to try it, just see if he'll, if he'll do it. <laughs> but I'm just after it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the other thing. That's when you treat a like fluffed up palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably that. get a. But then he just said uh huh and pinned his eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I that was also right as he was touching the treat with his tongue. Yes. So the, that reaction. That's okay. Was more than likely from his response to the treat, not what it just. Right. Would you normally ask from a seated position? No. We don't usually have a perch this low. Oh. <laughs> Did you see the one over there? That's the one. Oh, do you want to use that one? Yeah, you guys can use yours. Yeah, I want to use that one for a couple of Come on, let's go to your perch. Come on, man. Step up, baby. Come on, we're going to go to your perch. Let's go to your perch. Step up, man. Come on. <laughs> So that demonstration of Luna refusing to step up until Luna saw his favorite perch to be on and then that created enough motivation and clear communication of this is my intention, I want to bring you to this place and Luna wanted to be there and so he was happy to oblige because the reward in that instance didn't even need to be food for stepping up, it was just going to this perch that he wanted to be on. So you can see how drastic of a response that was and that's really what we're talking about when we say set up the environment for the bird to be successful. Sometimes you just have to move stuff around to really get the behavior that you want and rethink it from the bird's perspective. What's in it for the bird? Oh, he just, see, that's, see sometimes he goes through all his tricks because he doesn't know what you're asking. 
So I'm going to challenge that again. Do you believe he really doesn't know what he's asking? I don't know. He's just trying any trick he can to get the trees. Yes. So what do you think is easier? Do you trick he already knows or one that that takes more effort than is something he made out of Oh, doing a trick he already knows. Exactly. The same so, thing, yeah. So I think what, what we find is birds will offer all the other tricks. It's, uh, they'll offer the other things because it's easier. And Not because they don't know. Especially because you're reinforced, you're to avoid having to do the new thing that's so hard. This scenario right here is exactly why we teach people about motivation levels and what they look like. We demo this with a lot of birds on our family friendly parrot formula video to show you what motivation levels look like. Now, if we ask Luna to do some easy tricks that he enjoys doing for Brandon and Cheryl on the comfort of his perch, he will happily do those and it looks like we have a motivation three, which is what we like for maintaining already understood behaviors. So it would look like he has a perfect motivation. Motivation four is what we aim for when we're trying to either teach a new behavior or overcome something uncomfortable or a little bit difficult. This is where Luna is not. <laughs> so you can see that Luna is happy to do the easy stuff, but when it comes to a step up in this new environment that he's still not quite comfortable with, he is very hesitant to do it. So it's really important to track the motivation levels based on what you're actually asking of the bird. Okay. There you go. That was a really big sized tree. Did yeah. you do that? Partially, you break it up, but, <laughs> but I don't know how much it was broken up. So break it okay. up a little bit more smaller. Kind of size. So yeah, I think it treats as kind of or uh, almonds chopped to eight pieces. So I know we're giving Brandon a little bit of a hard time over treat size. However, it is really, really important that you know when to use jackpot rewards, which is basically a bunch of a little treat or it's a really large treat. So for example, I break an almond into about eight pieces and I can use those smaller pieces for repetitions. But if I'm going to jackpot reward my, for my bird for a big breakthrough, I might give, the, give him a whole bunch of pieces of almond, or I might just break out the whole thing and say, for this behavior, you get an entire jackpot reward of an entire almond. And that's a really, really big deal. So for breakthrough moments, overcoming fear, having those like big deal moments where maybe normally your bird bites you or screams, and that one moment where he doesn't do that, uh, that's where the jackpots come in. So it is okay to use larger rewards as long as it's intentional. So yeah, you guys heard that right. Our master classes are only two hours long. It took 40 minutes of being in this environment for Luna to finally be receptive to training. And you can see how much he's warmed up. He actually seems enthusiastic about these repetitions now. The motivation looks like it's all right, especially because I think Brandon offered that really big reward the first time that he stepped up from his perch, which is where he's a lot more comfortable and less likely to leave from. So I think that was a big deal. And then we were able to go back and use the smaller pieces um, but I just want to put it in perspective for those of you with birds that have maybe been traumatized in their past or maybe you don't understand or know about their past and they don't really take new things with stride at all they may need more time to adapt to each and every new situation however that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be exposed to these situations this was an amazing experience for Luna that is only going to instill more bravery in him and teach him the tools that he needs to overcome his fear or discomfort of new locations places people what 
what have you. It's really important that when you see that your bird is uncomfortable, if it is an irrational fear, that you really take the time to work through it and give your bird the tools to work through it along with you versus just saying, oh, that makes you uncomfortable. Let's just eliminate that from life. It's not a realistic way to do things. It makes your bird very dependent on you or escaping fear. And it's no way for any animal or living creature in general to live. So it is brought to our attention by both Brandon and Cheryl at one point that they would like him to be more social. Talking about the bird here. <laughs> because uh, Cheryl is a teacher and she has a lot of kids in and out of her home where she teaches, she would love for Luna to be more sociable. So we decide to see where his sociability is at by taking turns working with him. See how it does with you? Me? Yeah. Sure. Ready? One more. Does he spin as well? No, no I like to teach him. He's afraid of anything over his head. Target training is one of those foundational tools that you need to teach your bird, not just because it's some like funky little trick. It is so much more than that. You can use it to get your bird in and out of its cage back from outside. No joke, we've had people target train their birds down and out of trees from accidentally getting outside. It's such an amazing tool and really should be one of the fundamental things that you teach early, early on. So target training is what we are utilizing to socialize Luna in a way that is deemed safe. In both our eyes, we don't have the fear of getting bit because we have a lot of space between us and Luna's beak. And Luna doesn't have to worry about needing to bite us or intimidate us because there's a nice little healthy distance between all of us. And we're speaking the same language. So handing the target off to multiple people is a great way to communicate to the bird, hey, we all speak your language of training. So the next thing we do, since we see that Luna responded great to Dave and myself outside of the cage, is we recognize that when Luna's at home, most likely they're gonna need a barrier to make sure that the kids coming and being taught by Cheryl are going to be safe during this interaction and not feel nervous or anxious when they're interacting with such a large parrot. And so we decide to instruct her to do this with Luna inside the cage and just simply do targeting with new people that come around so that Luna gets um, familiarized with a bunch of variety of different people. And so we kind of simulate this in our class by using different students and people around the facility to each target Luna successfully. shorter for that. So where I'm going with this is I think that when we deal with birds that are are this afraid, one of the things that they need to learn is what we refer to as the mount experience. So a new person, new place, new thing every single day. And so since you have the ability of having students in your house every day, what I would love to do is, is teach you what this scenario should look like so you can have new students equal, hey, that person's going to come give me a treat. And what I would like to do, um, put that calm back down. You might have to back up. Huh? I can you might try. have to back up. I know, I we don't want that to be cat, rewarded. We also have a cat, so there's that involved too. So we've just entered a tough spot to get out of. Unfortunately, while Dave was explaining a concept or idea to both Cheryl and Brandon, 
Luna got heightened, went back to the anxiety that we saw earlier on in the class that we really didn't want to ignite in any way, but it happened because we were all paying attention to what Dave was gonna say. And unfortunately, I think based on the distance that Dave was from Luna, just kind of ignited the anxiety. Now we're in a position where if Dave does back up to make the anxiety go down or go away, um, or I should really just say that heightened state of emotion go away, now he's just rewarded by minus reinforcement. So he just rewarded that behavior that we don't want to see more of. So that's why he's not backing away. The problem with that though, is how else do we diminish this behavior from presenting itself? How do we de-escalate it? That's the word I was actually looking for. <laughs> how do we de-escalate it from here? So we have to make sure we have a baby gate over the floor so we can walk down one entire floor of the house. But oh. to change it back and forth and have him screaming for I teach downstairs his enclosures upstairs, so they quit. You could ask it behind the I'm back very and this will probably go in. Too. Handling him, I don't want him to we don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, for sure. So there's a safe way. This way. There you go. And you didn't else? reward half? Huh? Did you reward halfway or no? I didn't click because I was gonna try to get the other part, but so as you can see, Dave tried targeting to distract Luna into hopefully sparking kind of a training mode, snapping him out of this whole wings up, shuddering thing, but it didn't work. He kept all that behavior and those signs up and was also going to target, which is why Dave removed the target because he didn't want to capture all of that emotion <laughs> on cue, so he thought, let's not pair awesome targeting with unawesome emotion. So he removed that. Then he decided, let's work on the spin possibly, and that might snap him out of it because it could be an incompatible behavior where since he'd be putting his arm around, the Luna would most likely bring in his wings so they didn't make contact with Dave, and obviously that didn't work either and didn't quite go as planned. Um, so again, you always learn a lot from failure. Failure. You learn from success too, but we learn probably a little bit more from failure sometimes, and so this was just one of those times. I have to reiterate, even though we're professional parrot trainers, that doesn't mean we get it right 100% of the time because every bird responds to things differently just based on its experience and its life lessons and how it's learned to cope with things or deal with things and respond to things. So especially birds like this with a completely unknown background, we're just kind of figuring it out with you guys. So as you can probably guess, we're getting to the end of this masterclass, and I for one feel like we accomplished a lot with Luna, especially since a good chunk of this class was just him getting used to the environment. Sorry, I keep thinking Luna is a female name. <laughs> and then having to remember that Luna is a male. Okay. So one of the things that Cheryl at least had made very clear that they had wanted early on in the class was for Luna to learn how to spin around. And they had gotten stuck on it because Luna really didn't like anything over his head, which is very common among a lot of different types of parrot species. They really hate stuff going over their head, which makes sense because they're prey animals. So if something's gonna get them, it's most likely gonna get them from above their head. So I decide to just kind of tackle this and spend what time I have left seeing if Luna is receptive to one, training with me and working with me, and two, see if I can find a workaround to get Luna to start at least with the beginning stages of showing me that he's willing to spin around so that Brandon and Cheryl can go home with something to then keep up on once they get there to kind of expand upon.
<laughs> He's so proud of himself on that. <laughs> He's like, I avoided it. Yeah. This way, that way, that way. Yeah. Oh, that's because I'm technically <laughs> rewarding a, a spin this. Not technically rewarding the target. I'm just using the target to get the behavior that I want. Okay. I think I'm set up for you to do this. Unless you all smart me and do that. Because mm -hmm. I have that stand in the way and you don't. Which way do you want to turn? This way? Use a second uh, target stick in your left hand. So once you get one, kind of flip it down and bring the other one up. You know what I mean? I hope so. Which way were we turning? <laughs> Do you remember? Okay. You're saying use this one and go this way? Do you have cheese? Yeah. That's what I meant was... And I stopped paying attention. I got it. It's here. He's only... He's only been willing to turn the other way for me. He's only been willing to turn the opposite way. So I'll do this for you. So I'll do this for you. Not sure about you. Yeah, he's more hesitant with me. But what I'm trying to do is, is get him to go here, yeah. click, and then finish following here. Here, gotcha. You were like doing this and then trying to do something, but yeah. So just think of your right hand on the right side. Okay. I don't know about this I don't know if I'm coordinated for this. He does not like me. Just stay on that side of the perch. I could just use my right hand and it'll be great. What you could do is have him turn halfway and give, have Cheryl give him a treat. And that would keep him at that position over there. Mm -hmm. Keep switching sides on me. Alright. <laughs> I have to do that. back around for a street. Right? Yeah, it, there's a fine line between like making him feel too surrounded and I'm gonna lose him because it's gonna become like too many people. With the half turn it's fun. Trying to finagle two sticks and if I surround him is when I feel his him get like nervous about it. He doesn't want me on all sides. I feel like it's I feel like the perch is too high too for this. Right. Yeah, I don't know if you would do it on that one, though. You might. You might. You like Gorza, because that's from home, and you're used to it. It's familiar. So, do you want to switch perches and see? Yeah, let's switch perches. Honestly, I feel like the step up, from what I've seen, just needs to be repeated more. But the step up's okay. I think it's a noun experience that we're struggling with. Step up? So hopefully it's pretty obvious what my struggles here are with Luna and training him to go in a circle. For one, he is wanting to spin in the opposite direction than I'm personally used to training birds to go in. So that's kind of throwing me off. I'm right-handed and he keeps going to the edges of the perch, which is making it impossible for me to just use half the perch to do a circle underneath and do a follow through. Right now I'm starting on one side and because of how wide he's making it, I'm stuck by the pole going down the center of the T stand that makes it a T. Um, 
and I can't go beyond. And you see that when I try to finagle certain things and have both hands on both sides, that really messes with how safe Luna feels doing this training. And I feel like it t is going to eventually, he's going to just opt out of, <laughs> of being agreeable about wanting to interact with me at all. So that's a very fine line to walk. Even having Dave come in and work with him a little bit, you could see set him off in a wrong direction. And if that's done too much, a lot of the times the bird can just shut down. So you only have a tiny little window of mistakes that you are allowed to make. So I decide to set myself up how I would normally want to be set up with a shorter perch and going in the direction that I'm used to training and just seeing if Luna will play this game with me instead. Can you bring the treat over there too? Maybe delay the click slightly. Okay. He hears a click and he's like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, okay. If you would have paused at that, like, you think so? That, that, yeah. So where you clicked, if you would have gone a little further and almost like asked for an additional click, an additional click. I'm worried that he, I was gonna lose him because I felt like I was losing the half turn by prolonging it. So as you as you're trying to finish that rotation, just go like two two inches. Don't finish it. Just go two more inches. So you've got him to go most of the way, yeah. and you clicked. If you went like another two inches, I think you would have kept following it and finished the turn. Okay. Got to get it on this one. So get the click there. Oh. I just had to give it to him. Yeah, it no, so I. To get there. <sighs> I think I was holding my breath that entire time. <laughs> you were. I'm like, whoo. 
So interestingly enough, I saw enough response from Luna that I think if the environment was different and he was more confident in a different environment, there were less people, it was maybe just me and him, I really feel like I could have gone far with this bird, which is what really lends me to think that they can be crazy successful in their home if they can get Luna to the point where he understands how to overcome his fear and adapt to new things, which is really why we're pushing the noun experience, which is really just introducing your bird to new people, places, and things as often as possible in the most positive way possible so that they become more adaptive individuals. and. Somebody with a purple hat doesn't freak them out. Um, they're not just like easily spooked or set off by things because they've learned how to identify their fear and how to have tools to overcome it and accept those irrational fears. And they turn into not being fears anymore, which is really amazing and goes a very long way for birds becoming more independent and more bird-like and less dependent completely on you for interactions, entertainment, and safety and makes them just better birds and better animals. And for you guys, just really think now and experience and, and do your best to, to try to introduce as many of those things as you can, but also be very aware of speaking in absolutes, right? And really catch each other on that and just question it. That's all I ask. And then, yeah, use the, the target training and really focus on getting a calm target and reinforcing calm behavior. And I think you guys will find a lot of success. I think he has a ton of potential. And once you can kind of get over that fear hurdle, I think you'll see a lot of success. Well, I hope you guys gained a lot from this masterclass video, especially part two. If you didn't check it out already, definitely check out part one. If we can make this much progress in a masterclass that's only two hours long and with a bird on the wrong diet, imagine what you can do with your bird at home. Check out our online instant downloadable training courses over at birdtricks.com to get started with your bird today.